In today's video, I'll be showing you how I took out all the original audio from a scene of James Cameron's infamous Titanic and rebuilt the sound design entirely. Some of you may want to know why I did this in the first place. Well, I'm a film composer, and I wanted to test my writing abilities by rescoring the music for the scene. I will be using most of my sound effects from BoomLibrary.com. I found them to have the best high quality professional sound effects out there. Used by clients such as Disney, Marvel Studios, 20th Century Fox, EA Games, and more. I will be using products Cinematic Elements, Fire and Water, and Destruction for most of this project. You can find them both here at BoomLibrary.com. Since this is just a recap of how I've made the video, I will not be going into full depth of mixing and putting you through the tedious process of timeline organization. I will just simply be dropping sounds into my Adobe Premiere timeline and matching them to the scene's action. To get started, first I will press the lock button on the video, which will enable me to delete the original audio. The first sound that comes to mind of the sinking that night is the sounds of the screams and cries from the passengers. Now I will add keyframes, which allows me to animate the volume of the track, making it fade in. I imagine that once the lights went out, a lot of screams were heard. Now transitioning into the next shot, I'm going to focus on water movement, so I'm making another keyframe to bring down the screams. I'm going to add a rumble sound effect ambience. More keyframes. and now some ocean movement for more depth within the ambience. Okay, I'm turning the volume back down here as we move to the next shot. Since it's above decks, the water won't be heard as loud. Now for some splashes and sorts when the passengers splashing in the water. Okay, right here some passengers are jumping from the ship, so let's add some individual splashes next. Okay, one of the best features I find to love about Adobe's editing system is the ability to select a portion of a clip before adding it into your timeline. Pretty awesome. Now I'm lining up the climax of the splashes to the timing of the passengers hitting the water. I'm looking at the highest point of the audio wave right here in order to do this. Now for some dramatic explosions to grab the audience's attention when each board snaps. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm gonna switch these two. This one's a little bit more punchy for the first hit. And now for the big one. Okay, this one's a little bit bigger, which will take more sound to put together to give a texture. I'm going to have to bring down the levels from the others to make them sound a little different. Now we just need some like wood cracking sounds. 
It's all about texture and depth. As you see here, I'm moving the highest point of the peaks to the big action of the deck snapping. There's another board step right here, let's not forget that. I'm going to add some more ambience here of the woods from the decks giving. And animate the volume levels to give an illusion of perspective. Okay, now back to the board snapping. Now something to find a snap or something with more treble for texture. You're gonna hear me say that word a lot. <laughs> Okay, here we're going to have some glass, and this column here it snaps too. Okay, so I usually will go back and watch to see if I missed anything before getting too ahead. So let's check it out so far. Okay, so these boards snapping here need more drama. Let's cut in between these clips and raise the levels to give the illusion of perspective I mentioned earlier. It still needs more, but I'll get back to it. Okay, now some glass. Turning the levels down here from the rumble, since we're inside the interior of the ship, I want to focus more on the detail from the destruction with the glass and the column snapping. These splashes can be a little bit louder. 
I want to add some Metal Creeks now before I get too far. Right here. Right here gives Lovejoy's character a good reason to look for the reaction shot. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. I'm cutting this clip shorter to fit the shot, then adding a constant fade between them. Adding more metal creak sounds prior to the next shot of the ship breaking again to make it seem seamless. This is called a J-cut, where you hear the sounds of the next clip before jumping into it. explosion happens before the final giveaway. And some debris fly from the ship here. I think it's realized those might be portholes. I need to find some like spark sounds for when these men fall. There we go. Now back to these portholes flying from the ship. And the final snap from the bow and stern section before falling back revealing its interior. We're gonna need some debris scattering sound. Now for some metal bending and squeaks. Let's turn down the screaming levels when we're inside the ship. Now that we're closer to the passengers, we'll need some different perspective with screams, which is like closer mic. More close-up screams here. Here 
we're going to need some impact, some water movement and splashes, maybe even a riser. Okay, add some sounds from the ship's interior. Let's chop this clip up taking all the quiet places out and then some constant fades to make it sound seamless. Use this splash for the landing. some bass so let's add some whoosh effects. Perfect. Okay now back again for adding detail. Some glasses here and other spots for texture, maybe some screeches from the steel. splashes and steam hissing sounds. Continue the screams. Okay, now for the funnels crashing. This one's perfect. It's from the Fire and Water from Boom Library. Which 
gives it a beautiful transition to the next shot of the water filling up between the broken parts. Just going to add some submersion levels here for perspective. Let's take a look. Okay, almost done. Just need some individual screams from the guys who fell into the ship.